Good morning, Tony here. Once again, today is Saturday, April the 6th. It's the third time I've tried to start this video and my voice went out. So hopefully it won't go out this time. It must be um, allergies. I was outside all day yesterday. So um, I had a dream last night. I think that it, it's very apropos to the things going on. I think it means something. I think it could be from the Lord. Um, and I got a ton of other stuff to talk about um, before I get to that, of course. If you haven't come to Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> excuse me, do it today. Guys, I don't know what's about to happen. I can't I can't say that I know because I don't. I don't know if anything's going to happen on April the 8th at the eclipse. I don't know if anything's going to happen the day or tomorrow. I don't know if things going to happen on the days leading up to Israel's Passover um, or anything else. All I'm saying is that April 8th is very interesting Um there is a lot of things happening on that day. There's been a lot of things happening every day. Um, I think we need to pay attention. So if you haven't come to Lord Jesus Christ, now would be the time because anything could happen. And um, with the signs that, that we're getting, that, that the whole Watchman community getting right now, something big. And I mean big. And I'm talking, and I, I don't want to say that the rapture is going to happen on April 8th because I don't know, but something big. It could happen. It could happen today. I mean, we're so close. Um you want to get saved, and all you have to do is believe the gospel. Uh, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died, was buried, and raised on the third day. That's the simplicity of the gospel, if you believe this. John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The word believeth in the Greek in that passage means pestuo, or the word is pestuo in Greek, and it means to put your faith and trust in, to believe, of course, but not in the traditional sense that we as um, you know, in a westerners believe it's it's a it's a kind of belief that you put your faith and trust in someone it's more than just believing that they exist you're putting your faith and trust in that kind of belief in jesus christ and the blood that he shed on the cross two thousand years ago if you do this you're saved and sealed with the holy spirit and you will go to heaven and you will be rapture ready. So do it today. Don't waste another second because if you do and something were to happen and you were to die without that putting your faith and trust in Christ, you will one day stand in judgment and you will go to hell. As simple as that. There's no way to sugarcoat it, guys. I don't want to lie to you. Hell is a real place. Um, regardless of how you feel about hell, it is written in the Bible so many times. It's talked about so many times. There's definitely a hell and people that don't go to heaven go to hell um i have my beliefs about things and just like other people do but one thing is a fact you must accept christ before you die or you'll go to hell so don't do that and and don't be left behind don't put it off even if you live through what's about to happen and, you, and the, the, tribu the tribulation days are about to start if you go into that tribulation without christ now even if you accept him during that, remember, you're going to have to die for your faith. And this could be a horrific death because the devil's coming after the Christians of the tribulation harder probably than any other group of people that he has ever went after. Um, that's going to be like his prize. I mean, his biggest prize ever is to get the remnant of the Christians left behind in the tribulation that come to Christ during the tribulation. So get saved now and avoid all that because Jesus is coming for his church before the tribulation. Um, Anyways, let's move on. <clears throat> I want to get started. I got a lot of stuff, guys. I'm just going to say this up front. Um, people already think we're all wackos for the things that we believe and say. So there's no point in trying to beat around the bush. I'm going to say what I got to say. And you take it with a grain of salt or believe it. That's up to you. But I'm telling you the truth the best as I, best as I can. Okay? Because what I'm about to tell you, some of this stuff applies to my life. Just like every watchman and every Christian is having signs of their own, that God speaks to everyone in different ways. So this is the way he's speaking to me. He may be speaking to everyone else differently, but I believe in the end, all the things that he's telling us will come together and converge and it'll all make sense like a big mosaic puzzle. <clears throat> the dream last night. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let me start by saying <clears throat> this morning when I woke up to... Um, Global Rapture Watchers, um, Chris with Global Rapture Watchers. Now, so I can't verify this. It's just something he said. You can go check it out. And I, I had time to look into it, really. But he said this morning that, that um, I guess yesterday or must have been yesterday because it was an emergency report that Biden met with um, the Iranian leaders. I, I'm assuming that he did this on the phone. I don't know if he's had time to go to Iran. Not that even even would. I don't know. But supposedly, let's just say the Biden administration met with Iranian leaders 
and told them that um, that if that they would not stop them from attacking Israel as long as they didn't attack any American facilities or anything, any American, you know, anything that was American, I guess, any American targets. So, I mean, we have um, a, a officially now thrown Israel under the bus, not the Christians, of course, not, not the people, but, but the American government has thrown Israel under the bus and given them over to their enemies. Um, this is bad for us. This is going to lead to um, judgment on this country. And it makes perfect sense that that would happen right before the X, the eclipse Monday, when it crosses over America and forms the X. Um, and we could talk about the things that crossed over, and we got some things to talk about here. But let me go back to my dream. I kind of skipped, skipped over it. I wanted to get you that information first that that's already happened. In the dream last night, I dreamed. Um, now the dream, I can't remember all the parts of the dream, and I believe that because there's only a couple parts that were had any, that really were important. I think the rest was just filling. I think the Lord was trying to tell me something. In the dream, I was out in the road. There was an accident in the road, and there was a ghostly-looking man standing there, and he had a beard, and it didn't look like Jesus in my dream. I don't know who it was supposed to be, just as some random middle-aged man with a beard, and he was ghostly, so he obviously was killed in the accident. And he's walking up to the car, and he's saying, remember to eat the bitter herbs. You must eat the bitter herbs. And the dream flipped, and all of a sudden, I'm standing in this dark, gloomy, look almost like a dungeon with um, a jail cell, and there was someone kind of like, I don't know, balled up. I think they were like in a fetal position in, inside the of the jail cell on the floor. And there's some little pieces of uh, what looked like just white fleshy um, food laying on the floor. I mean, fleshy like, you know, uh, well, it, it looked like garlic. And, you know, but I didn't know at, the, at that very moment. Um, but I was telling him, I said, remember, you're commanded to eat the bitter herbs. I'm telling this guy in the prison cell, you're commanded to eat the bitter herbs. And I reached down and picked up a piece of that through the bars, a little fleshy white meat, and I put it in my mouth and started to eat it. And it was garlic. But I kind of knew it was garlic because I'm picking it up. You know, it was, it was like little garlic that had been smashed. You know how you, if you smash a little bud of garlic, how it looks with the skin still on it. Anyways, so I took it and I could taste it in my dream so vividly. It was, it was, it was garlic. I don't know if the garlic is even a considered like a bitter herb in Israel. You know, they got different things that they consider bitter herbs. I, I don't know that that is. I just know that it is a, a very bitter, very strong, pungent, bitter, you know, um, vegetable, whatever. I guess it's like an herb, you know, so maybe it is. I don't know. Check into that. I, I'd like to, if you, if you find out, put it in the comments. I'd like to know. I might look into it myself after this, but I want to get this message out. So what is that significant of? That, that's the only thing I can remember in the dream. Why is that significant? Well, we know that Passover on the Jewish calendar is on like the 22nd of April. So um, this eclipse is coming like a couple weeks before the Passover. So remember what the Passover is. The Passover is Nisan 14, the month of Nisan, the Hebrew month of Nisan, the 14th day. That is when the Passover starts in the evening. So you basically say it starts on the 15th. But the 14th of Nisan is when Jesus was on the cross. And they, the Jewish authorities wanted him pulled off of the cross before Passover because of their religious customs. They didn't want any of their people on, on the cross. So they had negotiated that, I guess, with the Roman authorities that they would you know, break their legs or whatever to make sure they were dead so they could get them off the cross before Passover started in the evening. So that, was, so that would have been Nisan 14. Okay, Nisan the first starts on Monday in Israel on the evening of the 8th, which is the day of the eclipse. That will be the first of Nisan. So many things have happened. That will be the first of their new year. Um, God changed it from Tishri 1, which comes in the fall, which used to be their new year back in the, before the flood. But he changed it during the Exodus to Nisan, which is um, in the spring. So Nisan 1 would be Monday, April the 8th. Okay. Now, the bitter herbs is part of the Seder meal that the Jewish people would eat uh, the night of the Passover because that night the hand of death would come over Israel and kill all the firstborn. And they had to put the blood of the lamb, remember, over the, uh, the doorpost, you know, the two sides and the top of the doorpost. And um, they had to eat this Seder meal, which included certain, certain items. I don't know all of them exactly, but I know one of them was a roasted lamb. I know that one of them was bitter herbs and so forth and so on. But my point is, and you can look into that. It's very interesting what all the pieces represent. You know, 
and, and how it's a shadow and type of Christ too. But that um, the bitter herbs was to remind them of the bitterness of Egypt, but also so that they would be reminded of what God did for them to get them out of Israel and not to rejoice the death of the Egyptians, but rejoice that God had delivered them. But the bitterness, to remember the bitterness of the event, not to celebrate the event you know what I mean? Because of, of the of, of the mass death and so forth and so on, and because of the suffering and all. I mean, they they have to remember. This is something that he wanted them to do throughout history, or throughout you know the whatever year after year to remember the sufferings. And um, they ate it in haste because the very next morning they were going to leave Egypt. Their exodus. They were being taken out. Moses was going to lead them out. The Exodus. What does the Exodus mean to a Christian? What, what, is, what kind of shadow and type is the Exodus to a saved, born-again Christian? It means that God's going to take them out of Egypt. He's going to deliver them on the wings of an eagle. Remember, that's what God said to the, to, uh, to the Jewish people. He delivered them on the wings of an eagle out of Egypt. He's going to deliver us from this world and from the devil coming here to this earth. Because remember, the Pharaoh is kind of a... Um, is, is he's a leader, and Egypt kind of means, um, the, the word Egypt kind of represents the world and the world in sin, you know, the sinful world. And because um, it's slavery, you know, it, it brings you back the thoughts of slavery and stuff. But Egypt was a, was like a picture of, an e of the evil world, and the ruler of that evil world is Satan, which is the Pharaoh. I heard that the uh, Pharaohs, the word Pharaoh is even used today in I Islam, in their culture and their religion to, to, to describe someone who's just a fierce leader and who's evil and selfish and greedy. They call them a Pharaoh. Don't be like a Pharaoh. Don't be like a Pharaoh or don't be a Pharaoh because that's what is synonymous with, with this word. The uh, Pharaohs were, was like representation of the devil ruling the earth. So our Exodus is the rapture of the church right before the, uh, the devil comes to the earth and the Antichrist takes the scene. So, guys, could it be that God was showing this, this bitter herb thing? Because it certainly wasn't on my mind. I haven't thought anything about that at all whatsoever. Could it have been he was trying to remind me that we need to be prepared for our exodus? Because so we don't need to, to, to roast the lamb. We don't need to do, Jesus already died for us. The only thing we need to do is to be thankful, of course, to be ready by accepting Christ but to eat the bitter herbs in remembrance of what we have suffered here and what is yet to be suffered by our brothers who will come to Christ in the tribulation. So not to celebrate like the carnage because it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad for those left behind. And, and, and we should remember that as we're leaving, we should remember that there is yet suffering to, to, to be withstood before the end. The end is not yet for the whole world. It's just for the church who put their faith and trust in Christ. And that's the only thing that's getting you out of here, period. And guys, as I go through these notes, um, just remember that I'm, I'm, I'm half asleep. I mean, I just got up literally, you know, like an hour and a half ago. So on my mind, I, I'm trying to put all this stuff together really quick uh, to get this word out. But um, I'm only covering bits and pieces. There are, there's so much information out there. It would be impossible for me to cover it all within any given amount of time that I would want to make a video. I mean, it would be hours and hours, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to go through some of the ones that are, I think are very significant, but there's many more that are. I just can't remember them all right off the top of my head. But the number 48, I want to get to that real quick. Now, remember last week, I talked. I think I talked about it last Saturday when I made the video about, um. remember, I think I talked about when my brother Kenny died on um, January 21st, 2021, and that particular year, and I knew something was up with that because, you know, Kenny was the only one in my rapture vision at 11 and he was hunched over. Well, he died of cancer, hunched over because he couldn't lay back in his bed. And for months he sat in a chair until he wound up developing a hunch. So I had, I've, God showed me that when I was 11 years old. He showed me a vision. Kenny was the only one in it. It was a nuclear, it looked like a nuclear war because this light that came over the trees, it may have just been the light of God coming to get us. I don't know, but, but there was this light coming over the trees. It looked like a bomb. Well, it hit him and about three seconds later, it hit me. It's like it hit him and I just braced. I turned to the side and I braced thinking it was going to burn, but it never burned. Um, it was just this loving warmth. And all of a sudden I was in the sky with countless people, as far as you can see in white robes and gold bands in every direction. And in the midst of them, in the middle was this giant, Man, he was probably 30 feet tall with his hands out. 
and he had a white beard, white hair. His skin was like, um, look, the only way I can describe it is the way Revelation describes Jesus. Okay. Um, because, but at the time I didn't even know that that Jesus was God. I didn't even, I didn't even know that. So I'm looking at God and I knew he was God in a vision. I knew he was a deity. I knew he was God. His skin was bronze. It looked, it was bright, almost like the color of a, almost like the color of a trumpet. So it was shiny and his, his just aura was just shiny. His eyes was, the colors in his eyes was so bright, like emerald greens and blues. And it almost looked like a storm. I mean, it was like fiery looking eyes. His eye, you couldn't help but just stare into his eyes. I never looked at his hands. Now, if I had have known, if I had been older and, and had known that Jesus was, and God were the same person, because as a kid, I'm, you know, he's the son of God. I mean, I, I, I didn't, wasn't mature enough to understand how to put all that together. But he had his hands out and, and I was focusing on his eyes. If I had seen his hands, I'd have probably been seeing the scars. Maybe that's why he holds his hands out so you can see the scars so you know who he is. But anyways, what, he had on white robe, white hair, white beard, skin was bronze colored, bright. He was a deity. He was God. Okay. It, it was Jesus. It was definitely Jesus in the vision. So it was the rapture. And we were in the sky. It was just blue in every direction. I didn't see clouds except for the people in white. They, you could say they look like clouds. There were so many of them. But it was, um, but it also, I'm pretty sure I remember, and I always say this because it was so long ago, you know, and your mind can conjure up things over time because uh, this was never really a topic what I would talk about. I, other things that I talked about, I remembered it, you know, very clearly. But I think also I remember seeing a shimmering, you know, it looked like a city off up into the sky, way off in the distance was heaven, you know, and that's where we were going. But anyways, neither here nor there. We know that's what it is. That's where we're going. But, but the point is along the video, um, I turned 48 the year that Kenny died. I was trying to figure out why did he die on my birthday, Lord? Why is it so significant? And the time that he died, which was three o between 303 and 305, it, it wasn't 30, it couldn't have been 301. I'm sorry, 30, it couldn't have been 302. It couldn't have been 306. And, and, and only 303, 304, and 305 mean to rise, to go up. And, and it was definitely one of those numbers, one of those times. And, and I, I explained that in many videos why. But um, I turned 48. I believe now that's the significance. 48, 4, 8, April 8th. And the three-second delay in the video from the time the light hit him until it hit me, I believe, is a three-year warning. Plain and simple. 2021, 22, 23, 24. We're in the year. This is the year. I also believe the trumpets that I heard in 2020 was a three-year warning, too. And remember, we have not hit Nissan 1 yet until April the 8th. So the year hasn't started. Now, Gigi, Gigi with Blue Heaven has spoke many times about this. She's talked about how Nissan One could start 2024 for us, you know, because, you know, our calendars and Jewish calendars kind of have to cross over because we're not Jewish. We don't go by their calendars, but we, you know, we know that God uses the Jewish calendar, you know, to, to, to measure time for, for us. So that's how we're supposed to measure time. So, um, Anyways, with that being said, it's possible that we are about to enter into the third. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're about to enter into that to 2024, technically speaking, even though we are on the Gregorian calendar 2024. Anyways, I turned 48, April 8th. Um, now, she made a video also about how many things were connected to 48. New York City just had a, um, an earthquake. It was actually in Lebanon, New Jersey. And incidentally, it was near a place called Chester, and I'm going to get that in a minute. There was another one in California around the same time, which was also it was a 4.8. Both of them were 4.8 on the Richter scale. So there's you another April 8th, 4.8. It was in uh, New Jersey and in um, basically in New York. I mean, it's right there in New York. And um, the one in California, both 4.8. The one in California was also near a place called Chester. Why is that significant? I'm not even sure, remember what they said about somebody t said what the name of the meaning was on a video. I don't even know. Don't even care because I work in a place called Chester. So um, Chester, South Carolina, that's where I work. So, um, I mean, this is crazy. You know, I, I, I'm going to get to the, the, the reason why that's crazy. Okay. Why Chester is, is, is important to me. And, and, but anyways, 48, um, also is when Israel became a nation. Um, let's see. Iran gave a uh, uh, few days or whenever it was a week ago, whatever it was that they said it, it was not long ago. They had given Israel a 48-hour warning that they were going to attack. Now, I don't think they attacked. 
But then Israel, uh, Iran wound up getting an earthquake too, so I don't know what that was about. Some people think they were testing nuclear bombs. I think that's what um, Lisa with uh, Watch Woman 65 believes, and some people believe that it was just God shaking their country up, warning them not to attack Israel. Possible. Both are possible. And so um, also lightning strikes um, the other day, lightning struck during a storm, lightning struck the uh, torch on the Statue of Liberty. So it's almost like these um, California and New York are being warned, by, like God's warning them. And both of them are connected to 4, 8, April 8th because of the seismic activity. All right. Um, so if you want to go back and watch that video of Gigi's, I think it was um, maybe, uh, I think it was the one that posted yesterday morning, but I think she recorded it on Wednesday night, if I'm not mistaken. So you can check that out. That's She had made a very interesting video about that. So um, let me talk about Chester. Um, all right. Any of you that follow my channel probably remember me talking about my work, how I have Doc 21, 22, and 23 in my department. And... Um, the past three years, 21, 22, 23, even the year that Kenny died, which was in 2021, you know, and then um, if you go down the, the other side of the building, on the same side of the building is 19 and 20. My address is 2019. 2019. It's crazy. My address is 2019. And that the, at the very end of 2019 is when the pandemic broke out, when all this started, when everything started to, to roll downhill and it's been snowballing every year. So 20 and then 21, I heard the, sh I mean, in 2020, I heard the show far, but then you come to 21. That's when Kenny passed away on my birthday. I was 48 years old. Um, I'm 51. I turned 51 this year on January 21st. So, um, when you move outside of my department is door 24 before, right after I got hurt and came back on, um, when I came back on, um, I was on light duty. So I was working at the bailing machine. Now I want you to check this out. A bailing machine. You know what we say? It's for cardboard. You know what we say when we get ready to get the cardboard out of the machine? We say we got to bail it out. What are we? What's going to happen to us when God takes us out of here in the rapture? He's going to bail us out of the earth before the devil comes down. Isn't that interesting? Because in door 24, representing this year, there was a gaping hole because the door got broken. And it stayed open and cold wind blowing in all the time that I was on light duty. They finally got it fixed before I went on my surgery. Um, I went out for surgery. So, um, when a surgery and I, I went through the eight weeks and came back, the door had been fixed, you know, it was, it was fixed before I left. And so it wasn't the first day I was back, but it was during this week. Um, I was about to go out the door, the door, it's a speed door and it goes up. I, I go I start down the hill or actually, you know, I stop because, um, my coworker's yelling at me. She's yelling really loud. She's saying, Tony, Tony, make sure you tell the driver that he can go but you don't need to tell the driver he can go. She don't work outside. I guess she wasn't aware that there's lights out there that tell the driver when we disengage the truck, because we've got locks on the truck, keep them from accidentally rolling away. So we, we press engage, it locks them down. Well, our light inside is red until we lock them down, and then it turns green so that we can unload the truck. That way we know we're safe. And the same thing for them outside. They have a, a red light, meaning that um, they're locked in place, they can't go, so not to tear up our equipment trying to get out. Uh, so when they get the green light, they can go. She, she didn't know that. So she's yelling at me, and I stop right in the doorway. Well, the doorway's got sensors on it outside on the ground, and they got it up above. It's not supposed to come down when you're standing in, in when you're in the path of the door. But evidently, they didn't install it right, or something got messed up because it came down on my forklift. Remember, my forklift was a cat forklift, Caterpillar, with the number 709. 709 is the address where I got saved when I was seven years old. The thing comes down and it rips the door off of the, the track. And now the door is gaping open again. They came yesterday to fix it, but they couldn't, they were un, unsuccessful for whatever reason. It's the, it's, it's like the, when the door was broke before they sent a crew out to fix it, they were unable to fix it. It took them forever to get, they had to do all this work to get it done. So they had to go back, get parts and stuff. Well, they left again without getting it fixed. So the door once again is wide open. Why is that significant to me? Well, if 21, 22, 23 are the years that you know leading up to the rapture, then the doorway to heaven would be 2024. That doorway. And remember, also at that door is where there's stops. There's no stop signs in my department. I mean, those those are for dock doors. This door is for forklifts. So it's got stop signs on both sides outside um, at the bottom of the ramp too. And it's red. It's like stop. What does that mean? It means stop. But the door is open. So in other words, it's almost like time stops. Time is up. It's time to go through the open door. I don't know, guys. This is just me. I know. 
there's 30 doors on the whole plate. There's 30, there's a number 30 is the last dock door on the place. So some of them are, are, um, Fort lift doors, some of them are dock doors, and some of them are actually storage room doors, look like garages, but they're roll-up doors. They're all roll-up doors. The man doors are labeled with with letters, not numbers. So how you know they're man doors? If somebody says a letter, you know it's a man door. If they say a number, you know it's a roll-up door, so whatever. There's 30, just like 2030, the 2030 agenda, Jesus comes back 2030. I don't know, guys. I mean, could all this just be a strange coincidence? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't believe in coincidences. If you want to believe that, fine. I, I don't. I believe that God is showing me something through my life, and it wouldn't be the first time. See, that's how I was talking about the Seder meal and talking about the Passover. Remember, I, I've told this story a, a dozen times. I got a, this one of my very first videos. I'm talking about this. Um, back in 1997, I was in a black Nissan pickup truck, little small pickup truck, with my daughter Sindel in a car. She was two years old. You remember Sindel's the ones with the, with the Orgando family channel. She's got the cooking channel. She was the one that was two years old. And so um, we're going down this back road about a half a mile with this slight curve in it. And to try to make a long story short, I should have gotten killed. We both should have gotten killed by a big black sedan that was coming at us when the car lost control trying to stop from this car that was in front of us who was stopped. And I, and I didn't see their lights. I was right up on them and I couldn't stop. The brakes were frozen. They had just got through announcing it was 14 degrees on the radio. That car's coming at us. I turned the wheels. I said, oh, God, close my eyes. And all of a sudden, something, something miraculous happens. The car... Or the Nissan truck, it spins all the way around 360 degrees facing the other direction. That car is gone. It's nowhere to be seen. And I mean, there's no way it could have got out of my sight in 10 seconds, let alone in two or three. It could have got out of my sight in 20 seconds. I mean, it was like a half a mile. You could see straight up the road and all the way up was cow pastures, cedar trees, and a little fence. There's nowhere to turn off. There's nowhere for them to have gone where we wouldn't have been able to see them. It would have been visible. There's, they couldn't have turned off. They certainly didn't turn around. They didn't have time. So, um, and besides the guy in the car would have seen him turn around. He saw, the, he witnessed the event, only he witnessed it blind because his mirrors was froze up. He had frost all over, and that's why he was turning around so he could go home. He couldn't go to work because his, his defroster wasn't working. But also his lights were frosted. Everything was frosted up. I couldn't see his tail lights. That's why this whole thing happened. Because when I see the car, I thought he was moving, but he was actually stopped. So by the time I hit my brakes, I slammed on my brakes and they locked up. I'm heading towards that car coming at us. But anyways, the, the, it spun around 360 degrees and made this er, er, er sound really loud. But I didn't hit the car that was in front of me and neither did that black car hit us. Somehow we missed, avoided that too, which really both situations are impossible because I would have hit one or the other or both. But anyways, I didn't hit nobody. Me and, me and Cinder was completely... You know, rescued somehow miraculously, and that black car was gone. That black car represented death. God was showing me something in this story, and I didn't get it then. It took me 18 years for it to come. I started studying Hebrew in the in the months and all. That's when it came to me. Hang on a sec. That's when it came to me that it was the Hebrew month Nissan. I was in a Nissan pickup truck on the 14th day. When I just talked about that, Jesus was on the cross on the 14th, and that evening was the Passover. That car passed over that was death it represented death and it passed over us miraculously and while i'm sitting in a ditch now on the other side of the road facing the opposite direction kind of pinned into this little cedar tree and um, it actually messed up the radiator so i never i never drove that truck again i wound up giving it to a friend who repaired it and fixed it up but um it wasn't worth a whole lot to us i guess at the time because we just gave it away but um what's crazy is the guy that was in the car that was parked turning left the reason why i hit my brakes he gets out of the car and says, everybody okay? And I'm like, yeah, everybody's fine. I said, did you see that car? He said, yeah, I was waiting for a big black car so I could turn around. I'm, well, I don't know if he described it to me, but I described it to him. He said, yeah, I was waiting for that car to come so I could turn around because my defroster wasn't working. He said, but I heard crashing and twisting metal. I thought somebody was dead. That ain't what me and Sindel heard. Sindel barely remembers it. She was really, she's like two years old, but she says she remembers crying, being in the, 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 the truck crying after something bad had happened. She don't remember any details. She was two years old. Heck, I, I, I can remember little bits and pieces of when I was four years old, but I can't remember nothing when I was two, but some people can, you know. Anyways, to make a long story a little bit longer, the Nissan 14, that's what it was showing. God was showing me this in a story in my life, you know, in an actual event. This, he was explaining to me that Nissan 14 was the Passover, and that's what we're saved because of what Jesus did on the cross. And could he have also been describing 
when the rapture was going to happen in advance, way then, who knows? I don't know. I mean, I, I believe that it's not going to happen on a feast day. I know a lot of people believe it will. I had asked God about it. I had two solid confirmations immediately that it didn't. I've talked about it many, many times. So, but here's the thing with that. There's always this last trumpet scenario, you know, twinkling of an eye, you know, between day and night. Remember in Israel, at the, at the twinkling of an eye, between day and night, in other words, when it's evening and when the sun goes down over the horizon and it turns nighttime, that's when their new day starts. So Passover starts at the end of Nisan 14, right when the sun is going down. Passover starts. You see what I'm saying? So could we go on Nisan 14? Guys, I mean, you know, it was Nisan 14. That's what I was being shown. But it was also it was obviously about the Passover, right? What if? Now, this is just a hypothetical. I'm not saying the rapture is going to happen. I'm just I'm just giving you a hypothetical here. What if the rapture happened? What if right at the end of Nisan 14 which would be like April the 22nd, right at the end of Nisan 14, right as it's beginning to turn to the Passover day, to the Nisan 15. I don't know, it's just a theory. So anyway, so that, that being said, with my job, with all the things that are happening there, could God be showing me something in my life like he did back then? So anyways, there's that. So the gaping hole in number four. So um, I think I'm about, that's about all I have. Uh, let me see what else I got. Oh, yeah. So there's also something else. If you guys remember, um, I don't know if you might have heard the story or not, or not, but also around April the 8th, there's the emergence of these cicadas. It's like these large hordes of cicadas that are coming up out of the earth. It happens every 13 years and it happens every 17 years. They're two different broods, right? Two different broods of cicadas. And they're mainly, they mainly come out of North Carolina and out of um, a city in, in Illinois. I'm from North Carolina. I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's my home. So I thought that was interesting right off the bat. But also the fact that Illinois, where they emerge, is a part of the path that the eclipse has taken, which incidentally the arc... Uh, the Kentucky, the Ark in Kentucky, you know, the Noah's Ark, you know, the, the um, whatever you call it, the exhibit. Um, it's the only, uh, uh, Bob Barber says it like this, it's the only Ark in the world since the Ark of the Flood. It's the only Ark that's ever been on the earth. And it's in Illinois, and the eclipse just happens to be passing over that too. So Illinois is also where the cicadas are coming up. And here's what's interesting. When they were playing the newscast talking about these cicadas, they says they... Every 200 years, all both broods, the 13-year and the 17-year, emerge together. That's this year. 200-year event. Very rare event. And it's happening this year. And it says, the newscaster said, when they emerge and when they begin to sing, which actually is a mating call, when they, when, when they start chirping, you know, that loud sound that they make, which you always hear, you know, in the movies and down south especially, you know, that loud, almost whirly whining sound or whatever. It's, um, that's cicadas. They say that um, when they emerge and start to sing, it sounds like they're saying Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. How's that for crazy? <laughs> you know, and the, I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, really, I mean, the, the path of the eclipse is going over a place called Little Egypt. You know, I mean, judgment, cicadas, Pharaoh, lo swarms of locusts. I mean, you know, you just put it together, guys. I mean, this this is something big. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening. And then when you add on top of that, NASA shooting missiles at the eclipse, there's that. And also uh, CERN, 666 CERN, you know, their emblem looks like it's got 666 on it. CERN is, is, is going to be turning on their the large hedron collider wide open. Now, all this stuff, some people are thinking that though all this stuff is happening on the 8th. Doesn't mean that anything is going to happen on the 8th. But it could be a very dire warning of what's about to happen. Guys, I believe that there's going to be a warning and there might be a short interval between the warning and our escape and the tribulation. And I mean that by like what I was just talking about with the uh, the Seder meal, having the bitter herbs. That's the, you know, the, the Passover meal. Well, in my dream, it was about the bitter herbs. You know, that's a that's got to do with the Exodus. That's that, that's got to do with the Exodus. Nissan 14, what happened to me when I was um, years ago in 1997.
that could have something that plays into this. Maybe Nissan 14 is the day, which would be April the 22nd. I'm pretty sure April the 22nd. So let's put it this way. April 8th is a huge watch day. April 22nd is a huge watch day. I'm not saying anything's going to happen because I don't know for sure. But it certainly be a good time to watch every day in between as well because things are happening in Israel right now. they still got that red heifer thing going on. Some people think they've already sacrificed it. Some, some people don't. But here, let me, let me bring this up. I may have brought this up in the last video, but this is important. This is very, very important. I've said this a million times. I, I don't know why it's just now people are starting to catch on. I said, you don't have to have a brick and mortar temple to start the daily sacrifice. I don't know why people think that that's a, that has to be a thing because it doesn't. They didn't have a brick and mortar temple when they started the original daily sacrifice. It, it happened in Shiloh in the desert and Moses made the first sacrifice in the first temple that God told him how to build. And it's a temporary temple because they were nomads back then. They moved around. They can build a, a tabernacle. Sacrifice to red heifer in shallow, which incidentally is where they're being held right now, the red heifer, supposedly. They could sacrifice to red heifer, start the daily sacrifice rituals in a, in a tabernacle right out in the desert. Then they could build their temple and eat whenever they get ready to or whenever they can. But remember that once they sacrifice the red heifer and they sanctify the land and build the tabernacle, it becomes a holy place. What we're talking about, the Antichrist has to stand in a holy place. It doesn't have to be the brick and mortar temple. It could be the tabernacle. Guys, We people are so fixed on this third temple that they can't see the forest for the trees. And I've been saying this before, that they don't need the brick and mortar temple. And if you recall something else, when David originally um, thought of making it and wrote down or made the plans and everything, God wouldn't allow David to make the temple for him. He said, your son Solomon will build the temple for me. You see, so... There's another, there's another thing. God has to instruct the Jewish people to make the temples. I mean, I believe. I don't believe they can just throw a temple up willy-nilly. God has to, you know, but he obviously is making it possible for them to start the daily sacrifices because he allowed them to get the red heifer. So I think it's going to be a tabernacle. I don't think they're going to get the brick and mortar temple built because if they did, and they'd have to put it on the Temple Mount, which means that there would be some kind of war with Islam. Now, they could. It could happen. And maybe they will eventually get it. But here's one thing I know for sure. When Jesus comes back, he's going to build a temple. <laughs> he's going to establish his rule on this earth. So maybe it's being reserved for his return. And that's why God had them put the Dome of the Rock there, so the Jews would not be able to make a temple until Jesus comes back. Remember, God ain't taking their sacrifices anyway. So even this, even this one in the desert, he's not taking their sacrifices. But maybe during the tribulation, when the age of grace ends, everything will flip back around and the age of law will come back in for a short time. That could explain why he's allowing the sacrifice to begin again. And if that's the case then it can't start until the tribulation starts, and the tribulation can't start till we're gone. There you go. We got to go. We're not going to see the... We might We might not even hear about the red heifer sacrifice. They can sacrifice many times. They just need the ashes. But we may not even hear about the sacrifice of the red heifer before we're out of here, But let alone any, any daily sacrifices. So that's just something to keep in the back of your head. Anyways, um, so let's see if I get any other news. Yeah, that was it. That's it, guys. That's all I had. Um, I know that was a lot. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I want you all to have a wonderful weekend. And think about this. Easter's coming up. Easter. Well, actually, what we celebrate Easter for, Passover is coming up in a couple weeks. We got the eclipse on Monday. And when um, that will be Nissan 1. And then exactly two weeks later, Nissan 14, in the evening is when the Passover begins. So um, a lot of people are thinking, too, that there could be a 40-day warning after the eclipse because of all the Ninevehs that, that, you know, and Nineveh had 40 day warning. That's possible too. I don't know. Or maybe the 40 day warning is for the world to repent before the tribulation starts. And then we go before the Passover. I mean, we don't know if there's a gap, but a lot of people believe there's going to be synonymous. I tend to believe that the devil's coming down. We're going up. That's always been my theory. You know, whether that be in the form of, of a war happening and the devil coming down or whatever. But then again, I could be wrong and it could happen a few days later. I mean, it's very possible. We don't really know. It could even happen in the fall. Some people think it's going to happen in the fall. I'm not, I'm not like, I don't I have it written in my heart on stone anything right now because I don't know. I'm just, all I care about is the rapture. What happens after that, 
I, I mean, I mean, I do care, but I mean, it, it's not, it doesn't affect us, you know, what happens after. So, so we can speculate on it all day. We're, we're not probably not never going to know the truth until we're in heaven. So anyways, guys, with that being said, I love y'all so much. If you accepted Christ, accept him soon because time's running out. Um, really, really soon. He's coming soon, guys. Get ready. Love y'all. My brother Chucho always says, I'll see you either here or there, or especially near. Goodbye.